I'm Thomas the Hermit. I am a lay contemplative and a man of prayer. This is my YouTube channel. On my YouTube channel I talk about contemplative prayer, mystical contemplation, and generally things about Catholic prayer. And I also talk about other things that are concerning me within the Catholic Church. Now on this particular video I'm talking about Teresa of Avila, the great teacher of prayer. I've been doing a series. Now on this one we are covering the issue of self-knowledge but I'm going to have to break it into two videos. This will be the first one which is the beginning of self-knowledge and then the other one will be much more complete and, and I assure you that you don't want to miss the second video. But the first video is going to lay the foundation for us. Now the first thing that I'm going to talk about is that um, that Teresa says that we don't know ourselves okay now this might confuse some people because of course we think that we know ourselves and we think that we have understanding but there's a lot of people who kind of live their lives out there in the world and they hardly ever look inside of themselves Okay? This is what she's going to describe here. It is no small pity, it should cause us no little shame, this is from the interior castle, that through our own fault we do not understand ourselves, or know who we are. Would it not be a sign of great ignorance, my daughters, if a person were asked who he was and could not say, and had no idea who his father or his mother was, or from what country he came? Though that is great stupidity, our own is incomparably greater. If we make no attempt to discover what we are and only know that we are living in these bodies and have a vague idea because we've heard it and because our faith tells us so that we possess souls. As to what good qualities there may be in our souls or who dwells within them or how precious they are, those are things which we seldom consider and so we trouble little about carefully preserving the soul's beauty. All our interest is in centered in the rough setting of the diamond and in the outer wall of the castle, that is to say, in these bodies of ours. Okay, so the first kind of level of self-knowledge is who, who are we? Who, who are we? And of course, this, this follows Teresa saying that the soul is like a diamond or a very pure crystal. That's how she starts off the interior castle. And remember, she describes the interior castle that, that there is, you know, this outer courtyard, this outer area. Okay, let me read that to you. Many souls remain in the outer court of the castle, which is the place occupied by the guards. They are not interested in entering it and have no idea what there is in that wonderful place. So Teresa is saying that we need to enter into ourselves. Now I believe there's two levels of that. The first is to look inside of ourselves to to gain self-knowledge. Later on will be described what is called the prayer of recollection, which she describes in a completely different way, and I'm not going to cover that right now. It's not a part of our topic. This topic is about self-knowledge. Now, people avoid, okay? They want to stay, they don't want to go inside here. They don't want to look inside here they think life is out here and they want to do things and and be a part of the rat race and and pursue you know whatever it is that their pursuit the pursuit of happiness etc etc and there's people that don't really want to go inside you take such a person and you put them in a quiet room it drives them absolutely nuts you know now that might be you, but of course you discovering that that is who you are can be the beginning of an enlightenment. 
That can be beginning of an enlightenment to start the journey to start understanding yourself better. Okay? And we do that by prayer and by looking at ourselves and looking inside of ourselves. I know that sounds very, very, you know, like, what is he talking about? Well, I'm going to try to make that a little bit more descriptive, but I'm going to read one more thing that Teresa says. And this particular reading, again, from the interior castle, is kind of like, um, it's kind of, it sounds a little disturbing when you first hear it. A short time ago, I was told by a very learned man that souls without prayer are like peoples whose bodies or limbs are paralyzed. They possess feet and hands, but they cannot control them. In the same way, there are souls so infirm and so accustomed to busying themselves with outside affairs that nothing can be done for them. Okay? Now, I'm not going to delve into the virtue of the active life. The active life is important to, to the world as well as the contemplative life. There has to be people out in the world working in God's vineyard, okay? Those people would benefit greatly, though, from contemplative prayer. And that's why we have some great religious orders like the Dominicans and the Franciscans. And it's very interesting that they both started around the same time in the 12th century, both the Franciscans and the Dominicans. And both of them are what we call active contemplatives. Okay? But there are extreme people who, who don't really want to contemplate. And I'm going to use the word want because I really believe it is a choice. But they believe that working and doing things out in the world is the key to, to bringing good into the world. Now, I'm not going to argue against that. You know, we do need people also to work, but we also need people to pray. Okay? And Teresa is trying to instruct people who want to learn how to pray. So, the first thing that a person notices, and this is where other religious meditation converges with Christianity. Whether you are um, doing a Buddhist meditation, now please forgive me, I'm a very orthodox Catholic, okay, don't doubt that for a second. All I am is trying to draw a parallel because this is about the human person. This isn't about God. Buddhists do not pray, okay? But they do meditate. And when they meditate, they discover the same thing that the Catholic contemplative, the beginner Catholic contemplative discovers, which is there's a lot of noise rushing around in the head. And if you want, you know, we could call that, you know, according to modern psychology, the stream of consciousness, that there's this constant barrage of thoughts and ideas and words and all sorts of things occurring in the head all the time, the stream of consciousness. Now that stream of consciousness will be discovered by anyone who begins to become involved in a prayer life or meditation. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not a supporter of meditation. In fact, I say if you're going to do any sort of non-Christian meditation, make sure you are firmly grounded in Jesus Christ before you even venture into that. Okay? And that's going to be another topic. Do not assume that they are the same thing. Now, meditational technique that is learned by Buddhism and Hinduism can profit the contemplative. Okay? But I'm not going to get into that. All right? We have to be very, very careful when we tread down that path. We've got to make sure that our focus is always on Jesus Christ when we pray. Now, when a person begins to meditate, because there is Christian meditation, okay, they will discover the noise of their own head. Teresa also says 
these are the reptiles and the vermin, the distractions of the world, the allure of the world, okay? The desires for success or pleasure, power, money, different things that encompass the worldliness of our world. And these distractions will keep us from entering into ourselves. Now, if we're wise, we'll recognize that we have, we have opened the door to self-knowledge, which is we begun to understand that there's a lot of noise in our head. Okay? That's why she says a person is like a person who is paralyzed. Okay? Because a person, they don't even have any knowledge that, that they just think that that's the way that it is. Well, I'm here to tell you that is not the way that it is. E even in meditation that is done in non-Christian forms, the mind is able to be steeled and quieted. And we're able to enter in to a deeper level within ourselves. Now, I'm not going to get into things that I don't necessarily understand. You know, we know that there are deeper levels of thought within the human mind. You know, we know that there is, you know, this uh, uh, alpha waves and beta waves and, and deep, deep sleep, and then there's REM sleep, and we know all these things, you know. But they do point to the fact that we can go into deeper places within ourselves, and we need to enter into those deeper places. But I say enter in holding the hand of Jesus. 